Our next item of business this afternoon is topical questions. Question number one, Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer, and I'm sure the whole Parliament will join me in extending their sympathies to the people of Nepal. To ask the Scottish Government what help it can give to the people of Nepal affected by the recent earthquake and what assistance it can give to the Nepalese community in Scotland. Minister Hamza Youssef. I uh, thank the member for his question, of course, expressed to the Scottish Government and this, I'm sure this entire chamber's condolences to the people of Nepal and the Nepalese community uh, worldwide. The earthquake that struck Nepal on Saturday is the worst in the region for over 80 years, causing untold destruction and devastation to the people of Nepal. I have written to the Nepali uh, Embassy to offer assistance uh, should it be needed. And as I say, I know members here will join in expressions of condolences. The Scottish Government is liaising very closely with the FCO, uh, with the British Embassy staff too, that are on the ground uh, providing help to British nationals in Nepal. Following the launch of the Nepal Earthquake Appeal by the Disasters Emergency Committee, I'm pleased to announce that the Scottish Government uh, has donated £250,000 to the appeal. These funds will be spent by some of our leading aid agencies working in the region to provide much needed relief to those affected, including the provision of clean water, food, shelter, and medical supplies. I'd like to take this opportunity to urge the people of Scotland to dig deep to help support our aid agencies in responding to the devastation caused by the earthquake. Uh, I know in past that Scottish, uh, the Scottish people have uh, dug deep into their pockets and responded generously, and I hope they will do so again. again I know that emergency response teams are ready in Nepal, uh, assessing the situation and beginning to distribute relief supplies, and I pay tribute to all of the hard work. Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, I know I speak for people across the country when I say that this donation from the Scottish Government is very welcome and will help provide some much needed relief to people in Nepal going through unimaginable suffering. Uh, in an email to me, a Nepalese family living in Aberdeen have said, word from our immediate family is that our Nepal home is too badly damaged to occupy and that, that story is repeated all across the extended family where many of the houses have actually just disappeared. They're alive and sleeping outside hungry and worried. Folk here are concerned about the impact that the monsoon season will have on their families who are already in an awful situation. Can the Minister assure me that we will do all that we can to help in cooperation with the UK Government and with international bodies? Minister. I thank the uh, member for that uh, additional question and uh, most certainly he can have that assurance that we will work with international bodies and indeed of course the UK government who should be commended for the speed of their response and I know that uh, they will be considering future responses as the, uh, as the situation becomes clearer in terms of the needs. Uh, regarding uh, the member's question about the Nepalese community here in Scotland and his own constituency, uh, I hope I was helpful in being able to give him the number for the Nepalese Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, that number, again, I will put out on, on social media, and I think we can put up on our website for anybody else from the Nepalese community that is concerned about their family. He's absolutely correct as well to say uh, that with the monsoon season uh, arriving, I've already heard reports of sleet and, uh, and adverse weather conditions in Nepal, uh, which will, of course, have an effect in terms of, unfortunately, uh, some of those bodies that are unrecoverable at the moment, uh, disease and infection being spread uh, from them. So I'm more than happy, of course, to make sure that we're having uh, discussions uh, with the Himalayan research, the Centre for Himalayan uh, Research. I spoke to the uh, Nepali Consul General, the Honorary Consul General, Sunita Podar, uh, and she has said to me that she's looking to bring together uh, the Nepalese community from across Scotland, uh, find out the various bits of intelligence they, they have, uh, look at the expertise that Scotland might have, and see how in the long term uh, we can assist with a more fulsome uh, response. But I would urge once again uh, everybody here to spread the message about the DEC appeal and hopefully to uh, raise much needed funds for the immediate relief effort that is ongoing. Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, can we play a part in the long term response in areas such as the assessment of material and cultural damage and work towards reconstruction and recovery? The Minister mentioned the Scottish Centre for Him Himalayan Research who have a great deal of expertise, and I hope that he will be able to meet with them and discuss with them some of the, the matters that they have raised with me, and I, I'm glad to hear uh, that he is willing to do so. Minister? Uh, yes, yes, I will do, and I know that uh, actually a number of our agencies before that have uh, great expertise in conservation of historical monuments. Uh, I'm sure we can have that discussion with the centre and see if there's anything that we can do in the long term. But uh, at, the uh, at the moment, the, of course, priority, as a member would understand, is immediate shelter, immediate food. Uh, but no doubt there will be uh, further resilience uh, work that will need to be done thereafter. A number of the aid agencies are experts uh, in that longer term 
uh, resilience work uh, that is needed to be done, Mercy Corps in particular, which have their European headquarters uh, here in Edinburgh. But I can assure the member that this is not a case of uh, that we will simply watch what happens this week. And then, unfortunately, as these emergencies often, as these disasters, as it often happens, they, they, they fall off our TV screen and people lose interest. I can assure you the Scottish Government, and I'm certain uh, the UK Government will not uh, do that. We'll be keeping an eye on what's going on, speaking to the Nepalese community here, and certainly speaking to our aid agencies and other public bodies to see how we can help in the long term. Thank you, Lewis MacDonald. Thank you very much, and I welcome the Minister's announcement. He will be aware of the urgent logistical challenges faced by the Government and the people of Nepal in terms of access, in terms of transport, particularly in terms of shelter. And he'll also be aware of the fire and rescue staff from Aberdeen who've offered uh, their urgent assistance at this critical time. Will the Scottish Government uh, enable uh, further secondments of professional staff from Scotland's emergency services uh, and others who are in a position to assist with the very urgent challenges of getting access to remote areas of Nepal at this time? Minister. Uh, he's absolutely right, of course, to, to mention our emergency services and fire and rescue services uh, and the commendable work that we look to do immediately overseas, and they always do uh, when it comes to any disasters that, that take place. Uh, we're at that stage, uh, of course, as I say, where emergency relief is the priority. And where any emergency services or any other personnel can play a part, then, of course, the Scottish Government will work closely uh, with the FCO and the, 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 the British Embassy to ensure that we can facilitate that. Uh, where I think we'll be able to add value to that is in the long term, to see what, uh, what, what, are, what are the needs uh, of the people of Nepal. It may be water sanitisation, infrastructure, where Scotland has a lot of expertise, and then we'll look to make a contribution where uh, is appropriate and where we possibly can. But I can, uh, I can give the member every assurance that anybody, be they uh, emergency service responders or otherwise, who are looking to help and assist, and we'll find uh, the Scottish Government uh, certainly uh, welcoming their contribution and seeing how we can facilitate that. Richard Simpson. Yes. Um, I'm sure that all of us join with the Minister and Evan Stewart in uh, wishes for the... Dr Nepalese. Simpson, could you lift your microphone up? I'm afraid we can't hear you. Uh, I'm sure that we all join with the Minister and, and Kevin Stewart and others in the Chamber in terms of our condolences and also expressing the hope that Scots will donate generously. Of course, the UK Government have offered uh, £5 million to match the first £5 million that's raised, which uh, I think is, is very encouraging. Um, I, I should think we should also recognise the resilience of the Nepalese pe people, which has already been reported on in the face of this tragic event. But can I ask him whether he, he's aware or whether they, he could ascertain from the veterans minister as to whether there are any Gurkhas serving uh, who are present in Scotland at the moment and uh, make sure that they, can, they are contacted and offered support if that is appropriate. Minister. Yeah. Uh, we'll certainly have that conversation uh, with, the, with, the, with the Cabinet Secretary and the appropriate uh, government uh, ministers. But I think it's, uh, you know, uh, the, I've seen a real rush uh, of response from the UK because of that relationship that we have with the Gurkhas. I've been very heartened to, uh, to see that response. So I'll certainly have that conversation and update uh, Richard Simpson. He's absolutely correct. Another area that I know Richard Simpson has uh, a lot of interest in is, of course, in the, uh, uh, in the psychotrauma uh, that can often befall people that have been part of natural disasters. Uh, of this sort, and I can give them again every assurance that uh, where that uh, request is made uh, in the long term, then we'll certainly look to, to, to help and facilitate. But I've been very heartwarmed, I have to say, by the UK response, both government but more so from the people. And I think that relationship between uh, our armed services and, of course, the, the vital role that Gurkhas have played in that uh, has been uh, a reason, one of the reasons for that response. Many thanks. Question number two, David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether we are providing an update on the wire corrosion on the fourth road bridge. Minister Derek Mackay. The fourth estuary transport authority, FETA, provided an update in the press release on the 22nd of April 2015. This noted that whilst this requires investigation, there are no immediate safety concerns and the cables still have more than enough strength to do their job. This work will be taken forward by FETA and then through the new fourth bridge unit operating contract that commences on the 1st of June 2015. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The Minister will be aware that since the acoustic monitoring system was installed in 2006, it's detected 93 wire breaks, but 24 of these have been since the end of January this year. Will the Minister indicate whether this is part of a longer-term problem? Minister. 
Well, uh, Mr Stewart's correct that the acoustic monitoring uh, equipment is providing us with the information that we require, uh, but there will be a further comprehensive investigation over May and June. That will be a bit more uh, intrusive uh, and in-depth. What that will do is give us further information which to make uh, a judgment. Uh, clearly, some of the cracks that will have appeared it will uh, be of, worthy of further investigation, but we are still of the opinion that there is uh, no media uh, concerns around safety and the cables are perfectly fine in terms of carrying uh, the, the bridge and the traffic on the bridge. Of course, there will be ongoing monitoring and investigation uh, and the work that we have put in place in terms of the dehumidification it will prevent further deterioration, uh, but some of that uh, legacy is from when the first cracks and breaks uh, appeared in 2004-2005. So there's no reason to be alarmed, but we are taking a very close uh, inspection of the uh, faults that have been found. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Will the Minister confirm that even when the new bridge is complete, that the fourth road bridge will still be used for school buses, taxis and cyclists? Uh, if there are further wire breaks over the next few months, will the Minister agree to come back to Parliament to make a statement to reassure the public about understandable safety concerns? Minister. I would say again for reassurance that whilst the uh, uh, increase in detected wire breaks require investigation, full investigation. There are no immediate safety concerns, and the cables still have more than enough strength to do their job. And there will be ongoing uh, investigation uh, that I've already uh, referred to. In terms of what traffic can use the uh, Fourth Road Bridge, it will be the case that we'll produce a road order. Uh, there will be a consultation on that, and that will set out future Use, but as the bridge transfers to the responsibility of Scottish ministers and a new operating company uh, contract, it will be the case that it will be designated, of course, as a motorway, and any traffic will be compliant with that status. But we will produce uh, imminently a road order uh, that will be out to consultation, and then I'm more than happy to report back to Parliament on that and any other matter in relation uh, to the strength uh, of the crossing which, as I say, will be fully investigated, but there is no cause for alarm. Thank you very much. That concludes topical questions, and we now move to the next item.